question, the member for Halliburton Kawartha Lakes Brook. Thank you, Mr. Qu Mr. Speaker. My question is the Minister of Rural Affairs. Minister, in the March 13th edition of the Peterborough Examiner, you were quoted as saying that you were shocked to hear that Kawartha Downs had failed to agree to terms with the province's negotiating team and that racing would end on March 30th, eliminating up to 800 local jobs. The story went on to say that you were totally surprised because the negotiating team had put a substantial substantive financial package on the table for Kawartha Downs, including race days for 2013. So as the closure of this track will have a devastating uh, impact on both of our ridings, would you please enlighten the House as to what was actually in this package that was described as substantive? Well, Mr. Speaker, I want to thank uh, the question from my good friend from Halliburton, Kawartha Lakes, Brock. I stand what I said to the Peterborough Examiner. We did put a substantial uh, uh, package on the table to Kawartha Downs to Mr. Ambrose, and we also had entered into negotiations with him. He decided that he wanted to reject that very substantial uh, package that was put on the table. Due to, uh, due to confidentiality in terms of commercial negotiations, these are the same packages, Mr. Speaker, that we offered to Woodbine, that we offered to Bohawk, that we offered to Western Fair. The decision was made by Mr. Ambrose whether racing was going to continue to Quarthen Downs or not, and we're prepared to work with any interested party yes, sir. to keep Quarthen Downs racing for 2013. Supplementary. Well, Mr. Speaker, uh, this government seems to want to continue under a, a veil of secrecy instead of the minister representing the people that he said he would because on August 16th of last year, you had a, held a press conference at which time you said that you had prepared a proposal which would keep slot facilities at the tracks and would maintain a share of slot revenues to support the industry. You said that these dollars stayed locally and created jobs for people in the community. You said that it was not a subsidy, but rather an investment. You also supported a private member's bill which would require referendums before casinos could be placed in communities, which you now say isn't necessary. Minister, is becoming a cabinet minister worth betraying your constituents? Speaker, in response to the supplementary, a budget ago, when we had a budget allocation for the new Kawartha Trades and Technology Center. Stop the clock. The member for Renfrew, Nipissin, Pembroke, you're warned. The Attorney General, order please. Minister? Well, Mr. Speaker, when the opportunity was there for the honourable member to support something in our region, the Courts of Skilled Trades and Technology Centre, they, her and her colleagues, voted against it. They voted against every allocation for Trent University to enhance the economy in our area. They voted against it. And let me tell you, let me tell you about horse racing, Mr. Speaker. Stop the clock. Member for Simcoe North, you're warned. I'm sure all of us know when I stand, you're required to stay quiet. Minister? Much, Mr. Speaker. Obviously, I've touched a nerve.
Would you like the answer or not? Minister, finish. Well, Mr. Speaker, when it comes to horse racing, I just want to quote the Honorable John Snowballin, who's part of the panel. He used to be a friend of the Fred's opposite over there. And what did Mr. Stoblin yes, say? The slots of racetrack program was neither transparent or accountable, and a new system was needed to put in place for horse racing in the province of Ontario. And we remain hopeful that there's going to be strong and viable horse racing. Here, please.